back to my bathroom and welcome to episode three of the haircutting series. Today we're going to be talking about, talking about elevations, finger angles, and guidelines in haircutting. If you're in school, it's on page 368 in this book. There's also a free printable on my website. It's in the description box below. It's free. I made it with my own hands. First thing we're going to get into today is elevation. Elevation is just the degree in which the hair is held. How much is it elevated? Is it down here? Is it up here? Or is it right here? For haircutting, especially in the beginning, we're going to be focusing on zero. 45 90 and 180 y'all I got my math tools <laughs> this is a protractor <laughs> it's a tractor this thing the first one we're gonna talk about is zero degrees it's all the way wait what right here so if you hold this on the side of my head zero degrees is right here but also can be called a one length also called a blunt cut all the hair is at zero degrees this means the hair is cut where it lives remember when we're hair cutting it's either all dry all in the middle or completely wet it's never one side's dry one side's wet and again for all of these cuts i'm going to be cutting random pieces this is not how you would start some of these haircuts i'm just showing you a demonstration when we're talking about zero degrees it's where the hair lives so I'm brushing the hair due to gravity my hair is directed down we're cutting at zero degrees we cut a diagonal line last week so we're gonna straighten that up today horizontal parting line in my subsection which is a section of the bigger section just a little baby I'm gonna comb it straight down to where it lives I'm gonna cut it at zero degrees so zero degrees there is no movement if I do this that is easier to see, but I am changing the elevation. Now I'm making that a stack or a bevel because my fingers are lifted up. When you release that, it's a small wedge. Not very good for a one length. You're going to be able to see it when you blow dry it. So zero degrees looks like this. It's parallel to the floor. No elevation was used. It's just where the hair lives. When I comb the hair, where it falls to gravity and I cut straight across now remember straight across doesn't just mean straight across this way straight across can also be diagonal you can have a diagonal one length as well which we talked about last week okay now let's move this guy to a 45 degrees which is do you see it's a triangle or a cheese wedge it's 45 degrees an acute triangle this is going to be for your graduated cuts your stacked layers the short to long bobs we're gonna take a vertical line this time and angle it at 45 degrees so here's my horizontal line parallel to the floor you could see how this would make a triangle cut cut I don't cut past my second knuckle so I'm gonna recomb cut cut 45 degrees when you release this, it's long to short. Elevating it that way has created a stack or a layer. So if you hear someone say, I want you to recreate a 45 degree haircut, you're going to use a method very similar to that also called a triangular haircut. 90 degrees, when looking at the side of your head, it's right here. On our little math thing, it's right here. 90 degrees straight out. That means I'm taking this hair out at 90 degrees so when we cut that that's straight out so let's get a small piece subsection 90 degrees straight out I'm going to cut 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 see how it's at 90 degrees cutting it straight can you cut 90 degrees out this way horizontal yes you can you're gonna get a different look we're working vertical today because that's how we're gonna start this 90 degree haircut coming up but you can absolutely cut it this way or this way when we release this it's long going to short and it's a rounded cut 180 is whoop all the way up here half of the dang circle 180 180 haircuts are typically longer layers everything is directed and it creates a layer. Let me show you. 180 on Brenda here means everything is directing whoop, 180 degrees, 180, whatever. Boom! I'm cutting, cutting, excuse me, a little backwards because I'm standing, my bathroom's small, y'all. Cut. There's my guide. We're gonna talk about guides in just a minute, so hang tight. Cut. When we look at this, we've got a square layer. Can you see that? Hair added to it. Woo! So all of this hair in this quad was cut at a 180. Well, except for that, apparently, excuse me. 180. When I release this, I'm going to have long going to short. It creates a really nice face framing layer, but keeps 
length. Look at it from the side. Look at this layer when we start to release this. Long going to short. 180 degrees, layers. Here's 90 degrees again right here. Zero, 180, 90. So the more you elevate the hair, direct it up, the more layers you're gonna get. You're gonna remove weight. Now when you're below 90 degrees, you're building weight. At a 45, you're stacking it. You're creating a very dramatic buildage of weight. Zero degrees, lots of weight. So just remember, when we're going above 90 degrees, whoop, we're removing weight. When we're going below 90 degrees, we're adding weight. All right, now onto cutting lines. This is the angle you're holding your fingers, also called your finger position, finger angles. You can call it a lot of different things, but your book is referring to it as your cutting line. The first one is really easy. It's horizontal, parallel to the floor. Here's the floor, here's my cutting line. Horizon, sunset, here's the sun. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> About to speak Mandarin. Horizontal, horizon. Again, demonstration purposes. We're working by the ear. This is not how you would cut by the ear because you have to allow for the ear, okay? If you cut like this, mimic what I'm doing on a real person, you're gonna have a big, you're gonna have a big hole. The only way to correct that is with a weave. I got a video on that if you need it. Or to cut the hair shorter. Demonstration only here. Horizontal means I'm cutting horizontal. Horizontal, horizontal, horizontal. Boom, boom, boom. Your vertical lines are straight up and down, 90 degrees this way, vertical. It's gonna look like this, vertical. Vertical line, vertical. Cutting, also vertical. Vertical, vertical, vertical. Now you have your diagonal line, which is going to be a 45 degree cutting line. Diagonal line, 45. 45 can be this way. This is a diagonal 45 line. It can also be cut this way. Change the shape a little bit. 45. Moving on, when we start cutting, we're going to be using horizontal lines, vertical lines, or diagonal lines. Now, just because it's diagonal doesn't mean it has to be right here in the middle at 45. It can be anywhere in between. You don't have to get your ruler out and say, oh, this is 45 degrees. We're using 45 as a loose reference, okay? No one's gonna say, okay, I need a 43 degree haircut. You have to take in consideration the client's head shape. How big is their head? How much hair do they have? Do they have any hair? Are they like, are they bald like me? You have to take in consideration all of these factors to determine that. But you don't get out your protractor and like, okay, 45 degrees is right here. If you do, I would charge a little bit more for that haircut, honestly, because that's gonna take a lot of time. <laughs> okay, it's gonna take a lot of time. I guess that's why I like referring to them as shapes, not only because that's what I was taught, like a 45 degrees to me is a triangle. It sounds cleaner when you're communicating to other people or in front of your client, because a triangle can be this big of a triangle or it can be this big of a triangle. But 45 degrees is, is 45 degrees. It's more loose, I guess. Triangle is looser. I love that. Let's get into guidelines. This is important. It creates the entire haircut. It sets the stage, sets the tone, whatever you want to call it. It is the beginning of the haircut. If you screw up the guideline, chances are you're going to screw up the entire haircut. Throughout this series, it's we're just going to shorten it a guide, okay? Your book is going to say guideline. We're just going to say a guide. We're going to move to the back here. In the chair, my client is telling me she wants a very short bob. It's not her responsibility to talk hairdresser lingo with me. It's my job to understand, translate, look at pictures, and do like detective work on how we're going to get there. So in this case, um, I'm not real big on celebrities. Um, actually, just actually don't like celebrities. Nothing against them. I'm just not into pop culture. Okay, all I've got is Joe Dirt in my head. Why am I thinking about that? I also don't watch TV, so that doesn't help. Um, I mean, I do watch 90 Day Fiance, y'all. Okay, so who's somebody from 90 Day Fiance? Work this out with me. 90 Day Fiance, I think it's called The Other Way. The woman, the teacher. I'll just put a picture up here, okay? She has short curly hair, okay? So my client says, I wanna look like that today. That's when I take a look at her face and I'm like, okay, can we achieve this? Is this going to do you a service or a disservice? We're gonna be honest with her because honesty makes repeat clients, okay? We want repeat clients because we want to pay our light bill on time. So I see the picture, fantastic plastic, let's go. Before I cut, I let my client take her 100 Snapchat. I bet there's a lot. Nobody cares that you're at the salon, but let her do her thing, okay? It's her time to shine. You go, sister. So I'm gonna take my first subsection, which is again, a smaller section of the big daddy section. This is my four quads basic sectioning. Here's its baby. I'm gonna do this in the back, but I'm also gonna do this in the front with my client. Before I cut, I'm going to physically put my finger on where that's gonna land. 
So I'm gonna say, Brenda, this is a short haircut. This is gonna be right here on your goblet. Is that gonna be okay with you? And Brenda's like, yeah, whatever, okay? So I'm gonna let her feel it in the back. This is where I'm cutting. And then I'm gonna turn her silly head around and I'm gonna say, Brenda, do whatever you gotta do, fold it up. This is what you're gonna look like, okay? We cool with that? She says, yeah, whatever. So I'm gonna make my guide after I've received confirmation from my client that that's going to be okay. Now our guide can either be a stationary guide, which means it doesn't move, okay? This thing is stationary. Stationary means I don't move. A great example is a zero degree haircut. Combing it and I'm gonna cut it right here, just like the lady from 90 Day Fiance has. Boom, straight across. I'm cutting this against her skin because if I take my fingers because her neck's in the way, I'm gonna bevel it and end up creating some elevation, a little stackage going on. That's not what we want. This is my stationary guide. This entire haircut relies on this first cut. So I'm gonna make sure, is this even? I'm gonna square up with my client. My shoulders are back, I'm relaxed, both feet are on the floor. And I'm gonna take two of these and I'm gonna close my eyes and feel for balance. Is that even? Because she has a little curl to her hair. So it doesn't really look straight. So I need to see, is this indeed straight? If it's not, here's your chance to go in and correct it. If you start with a shorter side here and get longer, this whole haircut is going to be messed up. You're gonna have to start over. So much better to just take your time, do it right the first time. Cut it one time really well. If it takes you 30 minutes, it takes you 30 minutes. Give her a glass of wine, it's okay. Trust me, she'd probably rather be here than at home with her 10 kids and annoying husband. She'll be okay. Now we're moving on. I'm taking a horizontal subsection. I should be able to read a newspaper through it. In our case, you should be able to see the hair through it. Can you see the guy peekabooing through there? I'm cutting against it. Moving forward, we've got our horizontal subsection. I'm making sure the hair is consistently wet, combing it down to where it lives, and I see my guide. So again, not above, it's gonna change the shape. Not below, that's also gonna change the shape just right at it. Now, if we were doing this in real life, we would do one quad, the other quad, one quad, the other quad. We wouldn't just complete one whole quad and then hope this one matches. It makes for a more even basic shape if you just bounce back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that's your stationary guide. Everything is coming to that first cut you made. Again, very important that that cut is clean and you're happy with it because that determines the shape of the rest of the haircut. Now our traveling guide, it's on the move. It is traveling, it's going places. Let's take a middle mohawk subsection. Just this thin subsection in the middle. Brenda says she wants extremely short layers. About right here. Can you see, because my fingers, I'm gonna fold my fingers back. Here's the hair I'm going to cut. This short piece of hair is my guide. It's a 90 degree elevation and it determines the rest of my haircut. Can you see that on the side there? I'm gonna do a round layer. All my layers are going to be this length. The head is round, so these layers are gonna follow the head shape. Okay, so this is my guide, this little piece, and it's going to travel with me. So what that means for us is I'm gonna comb. Here's my guide, I'm gonna play connect the dots. Now, I can discard this, because my hands aren't gonna be able to fit all of that. Now, this is my guide. It's going to travel. Here we go, get on the Greyhound. Comb this, whoop, do you see my guide? Hang on, let me move my fingers down so you can see. See the guide? I'm going to cut, bing. I'm moving with the head on this. This is no longer my guide. This little piece is my guide. Do you see that? Cut, okay, and I'm staying at the 90, which is straight out from where the head lives. I'm not over directing it this way or this way. There's my guide, I'm cutting. See how it's making? this rounded shape, this circular shape. Here's my guide, bing, bing. There's my guide, my traveling guide. Now, here's my new guide. The guide started up here, but then it moved over here, over here, over here, over here. It traveled with me. I didn't direct all the hair up here. That would change the haircut, change the shape, change the elevation. Last thing we're gonna talk about is over directing. Over direction happens when you move hair out of its cutting position or its home, where it lives. So for this, I'm gonna take a vertical subsection. When I comb this, this is where the hair wants to fall because of gravity, it just lives right here. So I'm gonna over direct this, which means I'm going to take it and over direct it forward. The more I swing it this way, the more length I save. 
You can do a lot of bangs this way. So I'm gonna cut this in half because it's overwhelming that amount of hair. Comb all this and I'm gonna over direct it and I'm gonna use the points of her, whatever these are called, on the lips as a guide. Cut, cut, cut. Cutting position matches my finger position. Connecting the dots, cut, cut. When I release this, I'm getting long going to short. A very uniformed face framing layer. Bowl cut kind of on this here, see that? <laughs> if I want it to be more dramatic, over direct it, crop your fingers or move your fingers, not crop your fingers. Now when I release it, whoo, I've got a nice basic shape to something depending on what I'm looking at doing. You can also do it the opposite way. This is where this piece of hair lives. So I'm gonna take it out of its home. I live here. You're gonna come way on back here. Let's do vertical subsection. Way on back, hugging the head. This is just a different technique. Cut vertically. When I release this, I have saved my length and I'm making a mild layer. It's not a big layer, but it definitely creates a nice shape. So over directing is just pulling hair away from its natural falling position. You can pull it back, you can pull it forward, side to side, get silly with it. You can do whatever you want. Over directing it will change the shape. Hopefully this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget about the printable, whatever it is. I don't know y'all, a piece of paper that I made on my computer to help you pass your test, <laughs> okay? Or for you to reference or for you to print it out and put it in your dang fire pit. I don't know, okay? Just um, check it out. Next week, I'm gonna be working on my other series I'm working on, because I got this new product. I can't wait to show you. But I'm finding some good stuff. We will resume, we will, we will resume, resume. Why is that word hard? We will resume episode four. Yeah, four to this, the following week. So not next week, but the next week. But until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. I hope you do something fun, do something for yourself, enjoy. Just take some time to just enjoy whatever this is, okay? Sometimes I get a look, like, what are we doing here? I don't know, but enjoy whatever it is, okay? Because, because why not? We don't need to be so uptight, gosh. I was driving today and I live in a pretty like populated area. Like, y'all need to relax, y'all need to relax. Repeat after me, I need to relax today. Like, everything's okay. If you're late, you're like, y'all, you're late. Be late, okay? I don't know why people are such a manic. I drive slow, so that's part of it, where people are like honking at me, so I hurry up. Like, no, no, okay, if I'm gonna be late, I am late. And it's better to be gracefully, gracefully late than panicking like, oh my God, you're, you're already late. Okay, just, all right, just forget it. Anyway, just take some time, slow down. Words of wisdom from the bathroom. Just enjoy today for whatever today is. Right, Brenda? All right, so until then, I will see you next time for something cool. Something cool.